Unit 3, Part 6, Notes, Compound Inequality. Compound inequality is two inequalities joined by the word and, or, or. So we're going to break this down between the difference and, and compound inequality. In words, it could look like all real numbers that are less than six and at least two. So in symbols, this could look like all real numbers. So all real numbers is a variable x, which are less than, we use our less than symbol, six. Then the word and in the middle. And then all real numbers that are at least two. So at least, remember, means greater than or equal to two. So the word and is in the middle because a number can fit both of these qualities, and we can see this better on the graph. So I'm going to start by putting numbers here on my graph. I need the numbers 2 and 6 to show up on here. So then I'm going to graph both inequalities on this graph. So x is less than 6. If I graph x is less than 6, Then I would have an open circle at 6, and then I would be shading to the left because 5 is less than 6, 4 is less than 6, shading these numbers. Now I'm not going to shade all the way because I still have to add this other piece on here. So I have x is greater than or equal to 2. So if I'm greater than or equal to 2, that means I'm going to close the circle at 2. And then I'm going to shade the numbers that are greater than 2. Well, 3 is greater than 2, 4 is greater than 2, 5 is greater than 2. So an and compound inequality has two circles on the end. They can be open or closed. And then the shading happens in the middle of the two numbers, indicating that the, the number can be both. It can be both greater than and equal to 2 or less than 6 because all those numbers fit both categories. So another way that we can write this and inequality is with uh, the variable x in the middle, the lower number on the left and the higher number on the right, and then it will always use less than symbols. And how we would read this inequality is that x is between 2 and 6. And then on this 2 one, we would need to put the line underneath it because it does have that line underneath that. So you will see and Compound inequality is written both ways, with the word and in the middle or in this format right here. Next, we have an or compound inequality, and that just means there's going to be the word or in the middle. And this means it'll either fit one category or it will fit the other. That won't fit both. So all real numbers greater than 6, so x could be greater than 6, or, so the word or in the middle, at most two. So the numbers could be less than or equal to two. At most means two is the maximum it could be. Everything else has to be lower. So then if we graph that again, we need the numbers two and six on our number line. And then when we graph this, x is greater than 6. I'm going to have an open circle at 6, and I'm going to shade to the right because 7 is greater than 6. Shade toward that, that direction. And then we have x is less than or equal to 2. We put that closed circle at 2, and we shade the numbers that are less than, which would be 1, and then anything further to the left. So you can see how this graph looks different. It's shading away from the circles. You have two circles, and then it's going in opposite directions. One will be shading to the left one will be shading to the right. So let's write a compound inequality for these graphs. Based on the look of them, we have this one is an or because it's shading away. It's not shading in the middle. And then this one will be an and. So I, just, I know that looking right at the graph. So then we just have to write an inequality for each piece. So this piece on the left, the number is zero. So we have x is something to zero, comparatively to zero. Are the numbers getting smaller or larger? They're getting smaller, so x is less than zero. It's an open circle, so I'm just gonna leave it as less than. Or, so if we go over here to the right side, we know the x values are comparing to seven, because seven is where the circle is, and the numbers are getting bigger than seven in the shading, so 
x is greater than 7. Since it is a closed circle, I'm going to put the line underneath. It'll be greater than or equal to 7. So that would be our inequality. For our next one, we have an and compound inequality. Um, we have x is compared to negative 6. That's where the circle is. And if we look at the shading, we're shading towards negative 4, negative 2, negative 1. The numbers are getting bigger. We're going to the right. So it's going to be greater than negative 6. Since the circle is closed, it is greater than or equal to. And then on the other side, we have 0 for our number. So x is being compared to 0. And we're shading to the left. The numbers are getting smaller than 0. So it would be x is less than 0. It is an open circle, so we don't have that line underneath it. Now, the other way that we could write this inequality, as I showed you before, is we put the smaller number on the left, x in the middle, bigger number on the right, and then always less than symbols in the middle. And then we add that line underneath for that closed circle here at negative 6. So that is also a way to write that inequality. All right, so here's just practicing graphing compound inequalities. So we'll go over two of these four problems as an example, and the other two you can practice on your own. Uh, for number one, we have x is less than or equal to zero, or x is greater than two. So if we look at that first one, x is less than or equal to zero. We just graph that like normal. So we'd put a closed circle at zero because it's got the equal to piece, and then we shade the less than numbers. And then on the opposite side, we have x is greater than 2. It's going to be an open circle at 2 because there's no line underneath. And we're shading the numbers that are greater than 2, which would be 3, 4, 5, 6. We shade to the right. We also know it's an OR graph, so it has to look like this. It has to be shading on opposite sides. So right now, I'd like you to pause the video. Try graph number 4 on your own. And then when you play the video, I'll have the answer for you. So that's what your graph should have looked like for number four. All right, we're going to go through number three together. Now, this, as you know, is one of the ways to write an and compound inequality. So it's going to be shading between the numbers. So to graph this, we would start at that negative four value. We'd find negative four. And since this symbol right here next to the negative four in between that negative four and x is just a less than symbol, we're going to have an open circle there. And then I'm going to go to the other number. The other number is positive 4. And this symbol right here between the x and that positive 4 does have that line underneath it. It says less than or equal to. So we're going to close that circle. And since this is a way to write an and compound inequality, remember we read this as x is between negative 4 and positive 4, we're going to shade the numbers that are between negative 4 and positive 4. So that's how you would graph an and compound inequality written like that. So now I would like you to try number two. It's an and compound inequality written with the word and in the middle. And again, when you play the video, I will have the answer for you. So this is what your inequality should have looked like graphed on our graph for number two. All right, one last example, a real world problem. In order to be admitted for a certain ride at an amusement park, a child must be at least 36 inches tall and less than 48 inches tall. With those kiddie rides, they only allow kids of certain height because once you hit that 48 inches tall, then you're tall enough to go ride the adult rides. Write and graph an inequality that describes the height of children that can be admitted. So right now we know it's an and compound inequality. I'm going to write this as one of those between ones. So I'm going to put x in the middle. I'm going to take the two numbers that I was given. 36 is the smaller, so I'm going to put it on the left. 48 is on the right. So the kids need to be between 36 and 48 inches tall. Now the determiners are at least and then just less than. So when we write a between, we always use less than inequalities. 
However, when it says at least 36 inches tall, that means they can be equal to 36 inches. However, when we say less than 48 inches tall, that means it has to just stay less than. It cannot be less than or equal to. And then we can graph this on our graph. Um, we could go up by sixes, so 30, 36, 42, 48, 54. Don't need any more numbers than that, that's fine. Um, so we can have a closed circle at 36 to represent that at least value, open circle at 48, and then shading everything in between. Those would be the values of X or the children's height for those who can ride that roller coaster. That is all your notes. You can go ahead and move into your practice.